I have not been working for the past month or so. I decided to take this time to reflect on my nearly seven years of teaching and what I am looking for in a job as an experienced teacher. Rather than sitting down and talking about this, I thought it would be interesting to be putting together a little meal for my husband because I never cook. I do all the house cleaning and he handles the cooking, but I wanted to surprise him with a meal tonight. If I ever went on Hell's Kitchen, my signature would be ants on a log. Off you, fat useless sack of yanking, thanking dude with shite. Let me introduce it to you and also Let's get started on the do's and don'ts of teaching in Korea. You will need celery, peanut butter, raisins. My first do of teaching in Korea is do know the type of school you can work at. There is not just hagwons and public schools. I actually used Corvia and I asked them to help me with my EPIC application thinking, okay, I'll just do a year or two in a public school in Korea. I thought I have my four year education degree and that's it. I don't have any other experience. I'm fresh out of college. There is something called a Salip school. I never knew about Salip school, so I'm really grateful that Corvia brought it up and gave me the chance to even apply to one. But basically it is a tuition based school. I've worked in two of them. I found those jobs to probably be the height of my teaching career in Korea. You have more responsibility. Like my second Salip school, I actually had my own homeroom class. Of course, there was a curriculum, but I could also make fun games and activities. I didn't ever feel in my two schools, at least, that I was being micromanaged. It just felt like I was putting my education degree to good use. The other benefit is just the vacation. I had about a month in the summer and a month in the winter. For something like a Salip school, they're looking for education degrees. So not everyone is gonna be qualified, but if you happen to hold a education degree, don't be afraid to ask recruiters and see how it goes. Not many people I think know that they're an option. My golden raisins are from Trader Joe's. I was actually in America in March visiting my family. I just brought home like half of my luggage was Trader Joe's because I have an unhealthy obsession. Anyway, so my second do. When you find a job that you're interested in, do check the blacklist site, which I will link below. Mm. So yeah, check the blacklist. When you receive the name of a school, when you apply directly or whether it be recruiter, doesn't matter. You go on the blacklist site, do the find key option shortcut, Try to type in the school name. If it pops up, run. Why are you running? Why are you running? So my third do, once you've found a school, you've applied for it, and the school's like, all right, we're gonna send over the contract. Say, can I please have the contact of a teacher who currently works at your school? If they refuse that, just walk away. Do not feel anxious about asking for that teacher's contact. They will ask the teacher for permission. Don't worry about it. Well, they should. Once you get that teacher's contact, confirm like some of the information you already have, such as vacation time, your break time during the day. Pick the most important questions you want to double check. Always ask, so what is the atmosphere like at the school? Are you comfortable at the school? Do you think it's a good working environment? One time the, the principal put me in a group chat. It was her, the teacher contact, and then me. So I just made a one-on-one -on -one chat with the girl and she was very honest and I was able to make my decision based on what she gave me. So that was really helpful. That would be my third do, contact a teacher. Ask them the important questions that you might not be getting from just interviewing with the school. These are my ants on a log. My mom used to make them as a snack for me when I was a kid, so. I recommend that you make them for your significant other to show love. And they'll be like, what is that? Look at that plating technique though. <sighs> I need a break after making ants on a log. My fourth do is know your rights. As of 2024, from what I know, when you have a full-time job as a teacher in Korea, you should be provided housing or have a housing stipend. The school will register you for insurance. You pay 50% and they pay 50. Another one would be you're entitled to severance pay when you complete a full contract year. So that severance pay should be equal to one month salary. Depending on where you're from, 
you should be paying into a pension plan. If there are more than five employees at the school, the school must legally give you 11 paid vacation days. It used to be 10 vacation days, but as of like last year, it became 11. So a lot of contracts still say 10. Make sure that um, you ask about that if you see that. If your work schedule is up to eight hours in a day, then you are entitled to 30 minutes of break time consecutively. What I've heard from some teachers experiences is they don't really get the break time because their school expects them to supervise kids eating lunch with kids in the classroom again that is not a break time don't quote me on this but i've heard teachers say like you're supposed to be able to leave the campus i've personally never had that experience at a school where i could go out or i felt like i could go out but if you're at a school where things are prepped you have a curriculum you have books you really have nothing to do during that break you should technically be allowed to leave and come back in time for your class. Of course, I'm probably leaving some things out or not mentioning everything. This video is not meant to be comprehensive information of everything that you need to know to be a teacher here. The goal is just to get some of my thoughts out there. Actually, one of the reasons why I wanted to start a YouTube channel was to have somewhere to put some of my experiences that could help someone else. I've already prepared my vegetables because nobody wants to watch me cut things for an hour. Imagine that your skills are this onion. There are many layers to what you can do. So number five is do advocate for yourself. If you're straight out of college and you're like, I just wanna get into Korea, it's okay if it's a crap job and I'm getting paid nothing. No, you need to care. If you see something on your contract that you think is sketchy or you don't agree with it, do point it out. If they're not willing to work with you, move on. It's better than getting locked into a job where people don't respect you or value you the way that you should be valued. I recently left my job because I looked at the contract, I had some disagreements. I didn't have the opportunity to negotiate. And so what I ended up doing was just leaving. And I know that I have NF visa, I have that privilege to just leave and be in between jobs. I know not everyone can just up and leave a job and some people are depending on their visa sponsorship. If you wanted to leave a contract early, then you need to get a letter of release from your current employer and there are times when they have refused to do that for people. But just save your sanity, your peace of mind. It's not worth staying in a job that's gonna be a miserable year for you just so that you can be in Korea. My first don't is don't apply to jobs expecting it to be a year of partying and travel and fun. Don't come here unless your first priority is to get to know Korean culture, maybe travel within Korea and teach kids because your job is going to be the biggest chunk of your life here. So before you even apply for teaching jobs in Korea, you really need to be aware not everyone gets good vacation. Hagwons, like I said, are legally if there's five or more people, they have to give you 11 days. That doesn't mean 11 days at once. That means, for example, five days in summer, six days in winter or something like this. It's not gonna be a month to go traveling around. It's gonna be very short vacations. It's gonna be really long work days. It's gonna be working with kids, creating lessons, dealing with parents. It's not easy. Teaching English is probably seen as not a very difficult job, but depending on where you go, how your director or principal is, how the kids are, what is expected, it's it can be very challenging. You can get some hagwon jobs that are so chill and don't take a lot out of you, but if you are unlucky and you just land a job that is mentally draining or takes a lot of energy during the day, you don't really get to enjoy your break time or even your vacation. Like it comes up on you and you're just like, I didn't even plan for anything. I'm exhausted. Make sure first and foremost, you're actually interested in living in another country, learning that country's ways and working with children. I'm going to cook my garlic and my onions first. For my second don't, do not pay any recruiters. It is a free service for you. If you choose to go with a recruiter, you should not be paying them anything. I had a really good experience with Corvia. I didn't feel pressured. I felt like the recruiters were all really nice and looking out for my best interests and also considering my degree and experience in order to land me really good jobs. There will be recruiters out there though who are not looking out for your best interests. They will be working for a notorious 
hagwons that are not great and they will push you they will demand you to make decisions that you might not be ready to make and you might have more questions that they're not willing to answer because they just want to get their pay do not feel pressured you do not need to take any of their jobs i've heard of recruiters harassing teachers in a way as in like calling them and arguing with them making them very uncomfortable don't let them bully you you don't owe them anything at the end of the day you need to make a decision that's right for you this looks so healthy i need to get my sugar sauce ready five tablespoons of soy sauce then four tablespoons of oyster sauce but i don't have that so i'm gonna use some maybe thai fish sauce oh god okay sugar rice wine vinegar is the last thing mix and hope for the best my third don't is do not take a job that is offering you 2.1 or 2.2 2.1, 2.2 has been the standard since before I came to Korea. It is not okay in this economy. If you live in Seoul, they're going to try to pitch you jobs that are, just have a lower salary because it's in such high demand. You're going to have to fight a little bit. Uh, do not accept 2.1, 2.2 in Seoul. Even if you're given housing, that's no. So I did a little survey in one of the expat groups that I'm in on Facebook. A lot of the teachers gave me some really good feedback. The general consensus, regardless of where you get placed in Korea, let's just generalize, because I know every city is different and Seoul is going to be more expensive versus like living in Jeonju, for example. But general consensus is if you're a brand new teacher, accepting 2.3 is, it's okay. But if you can get 2.4, 2.5, that would be really like that would be ideal in 2024 and if you are a teacher who is experienced you really should not be taking anything lower than like 2.8 ideally and that remember this is base salary this is not combined with housing or housing stipend and another thing is uh, housing stipend should not be 300 and 400 thousand won anymore I think regardless of where you are, you should be getting at least 600. And also, if you need to get a place with a massive key money deposit, then that is also something you need to consider. I don't know how many jobs actually provide help with that. I know there are some out there. These days, getting a decent place, as in like a relatively clean place without mold or some sort of infestation of God knows what, having sunlight, these little things, make the price go up right if you saw my housing video we put down a massive deposit for this place because we wanted to avoid all that just be prepared to have to put down i would say 10 to 15 million won for a decent place these days even a one room i'm not even joking it is very expensive this is where we're at now with the stir fry my husband should be coming home at any time my final don't, number four. Don't limit yourself to solar. I actually wanted to move to Busan. I wasn't able to get a job there and it actually turned out to be a blessing to not be placed in one of the bigger cities. I ended up an hour outside of Busan, a small city called Kojido, and it's actually super beautiful. Uh, it would have been nice if I had a car to be honest, but spending two years there was really nice and also just have a really good community. I made a lot of my closest friends in Kojido who I'm still friends with today. It was just a really unique atmosphere. I was able to take an hour bus into Busan when I wanted to. It was like a five or six hour bus ride to Seoul when I wanted to. I got to enjoy bright blue water. I got to enjoy hiking. I got to enjoy just being in cleaner air because the air quality sucks. Don't limit yourself to Seoul. Be open-minded, be willing to take a better job even if it means being an hour outside of Seoul in Gyeonggi-do somewhere if the job is better it's going to be a better experience for you in Korea you're gonna have more energy to go do things kind of doesn't look great but I'm hoping that it will taste better than it looks guess what I did oh wow that looks amazing baby. are you shocked I am but I am actually genuinely shocked because you know, you'll cook. I hope this video was helpful. I know it was kind of all over the place. It was kind of my first time trying to speak as freely as possible. And double tasking is not easy, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Whoever's applying for jobs, I hope that this video 
helps you. Send this video to your friends who maybe are looking for jobs in Korea. I'll see you in the next video. I made you something else. Are you ready? Guess what it is. Take a guess. What am I really good at making? Yeah! <laughs>